Ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to Too Many Games. And today uh, I'm responding to what you guys said that uh, you'd like to see on this channel. Um, I do have our uh, aircraft and spacecraft videos in the works. Haven't had too much time to put into them lately, but uh, they are coming, rest assured. But in the meantime, I thought we'd change gear and just respond to a few requests that people have been putting through just to, to get some ideas around armies, list building, how to build your armies, all that kind of stuff. So in this video, we're going to be doing an army review for the Codex Astartes, that is the Space Marine Force in Epic Armageddon. So I don't really have a script for this. I'm just going to go through the slides that I've got here for it, go through all the units, have a look at them, and um, hopefully tell you what I think about them and what their pros and their cons are. So let's get started. So first thing uh, with the Codex Astartes, or I'm just going to call them the Space Marines because that's how I've always known them. You have a strategy rating of five. That's the highest in the game. Um, this cannot be uh, overstated how good this is. You will normally win that strategy roll and uh, you're gonna be deciding if you're going first or your opponent is. It is absolutely brilliant. Along with that, your initiative rating of one plus means that you'll activate automatically on your units unless you're suffering from blast markers or retaining the initiative. So they are exceptionally reliable uh, to activate when you need them to. So you can usually activate first if you need to and activate uh, reliably. Imperial Navy units are two plus, but um, you may or may not even use them in your force. That's uh, up to you and that's something we might explore in some list building at some point. But in this video, we're just gonna have a bit of a review. So let's have a look at the special rules first. Um, kind of the big one that they have is they shall know no fear. Uh, this is essentially where it takes double the blast markers to suppress and to break them. Um, so you're looking at two blast markers uh, to suppress a Space Marine unit or to kill a unit if they're already broken and they come under fire from blast markers. Um, you ignore any leftover blast markers that you have. So if you have three, you only suppress one unit. Uh, they are only broken if they have two blast markers per unit. So if the formation has four units in it, it needs eight blast markers to break them. Uh, you count half their number of blast markers in assault resolution, rounding down, and you halve the number of extra hits they suffer if they lose an assault, rounding down. This is all really good stuff for them. Uh, if they rally, um, receive blast markers equal to, uh, equal to the number of units instead of half the number of units. So it's just a few little things there, but basically the big one to take away uh, is it usually requires double the number of blast markers to do something to Space Marine. Uh, forces, which is really good. Uh, Space Marine transports is the other special rule. Um, so you'll see plus transports written in their army list, uh, which basically means that the unit that has plus transports written with it gets free rhinos. Um, you can take drop pods instead if you want. Um, you get the minimum number of rhinos that you need to transport all the units in the formation. Um, so you can't just get 10 rhinos, you might only need two or three. Um, if you want to take drop pods, you can, but you do need a spacecraft. So that's an additional cost that we'll have a look at. But they're your, your basic special rules for them. Okay, let's start with the Supreme Commander. This is a character upgrade uh, that you can take. Um, it has a power weapon, which basically works out as a, a, an extra attack in, in close combat as a macro weapon. Um, invulnerable save, which is a six plus invulnerable save. And the Supreme Commander rule, which basically allows <clears throat> the um, Supreme Commander to uh, re-roll on your initiative test or a rally test, one per turn, which is uh, really good, um, really, really good. But it costs 100 points to include in your force. Um, <clears throat> the pros, well, I think this guy is essential. Uh, unless you're playing a really small game, if you're 3,000 and up, I think you need to take this guy. Uh, essential for that re-roll because you do not want to fail a re-roll when you really need it. Even though um, Space Marines, you could say, you know, you don't need it. Uh, I think you do when it comes to that turn that you just need to activate or to retain the initiative. Yeah, you really need that. Um, the Supreme Commander special rule also counts as leader. So it also helps removing the blast markers, which is really good. Uh, the macro weapon is always a positive. And uh, yeah, so this guy counts as a commander as well. So it can just um, do the rules of a commander, taking other units into combat as well. So a lot of pros, I think, for your 100 points. The cons, it's 100 points. That's a big ask, I think. But uh, 3,000 and up, I would definitely say take this guy. 
Uh, the invulnerable save, I just think you're paying for something that's pretty useless. Six plus, you won't see that too often. So it gets a big tick from me. I'm basically gonna say a tick or a cross, depending on whether or not I uh, think they're worth it. The captain upgrade. Again, it's another character upgrade. Uh, same deal, you get that extra, extra plus one macro weapon attack in uh, close combat. Uh, it has a commander special rule, invulnerable save, and leader, uh, and 50 points uh, to upgrade it. The commander rule is the one where uh, if they're assaulting, they can take up to three other units with them on that assault. Um, you can check out my video on the special rules if you want to know all about that. Um, but basically, you can take multiple units into an assault with you. It's, it's really good. Um, and I would say the pros, this character is really good if you want to lead assaults. If you want to hit hard with a few units, kind of alpha strike, this this guy is worth the 50 points. Removing blast markers, always great, always great. And uh, the macro weapon attack, always just a nice little bonus. Uh, again, I think the cons, the cost is, uh, you know, 50 points. If you don't use it or you're not planning to assault, I don't think it's worth it. Uh, and there is limited use outside of assaults. So I wouldn't take this guy if you weren't planning on uh, doing an assault with multiple units. I don't think he's worth it for that. And uh, that invulnerable save, yeah, again, six plus. Still gets the tick from me. I do think it's worth it. So if you want the captain, I'd say take him. All right, the chaplain. So we're looking at the chaplain again, that same uh, power weapon, uh, that plus one extra attack in, uh, in close combat as a macro weapon. It's got the inspiring rule. This is plus one in the combat resolution along with the invulnerable save and the leader special rule to remove those blast markers. So I think that plus one combat res is great. Um, it's both offensive and defensive. Uh, and obviously removing blast markers and your macro weapon attack is good. But that plus one combat res is really good and it can just help to win those battles or those fights rather that you need to. Um, again, 50 points is a lot, um, but I do think it's worth it. If you are going to be uh, assaulting, this guy's great to have in an assault. And, you know, the captain can actually take the chaplain in a different unit uh, in different formation into assault. So you can double up like that. Gets a big tick as well for the chaplain. The librarian. Okay, the librarian's a little bit different. You've still got that invulnerable save uh, and you've still got leader. So, you know, leader's great. You've got smite, which is a ranged extra attack macro weapon. So it's got your small arms rule. So you're using that as a firefight attack, basically. Um, macro weapon firefight, that is good. That's not hugely common. So I think that's pretty good and still got the same power weapon in uh, close combat. So, you know, pretty good in that sense. And I think that is one of the pros for this guy is you have that macro weapon in assault, whether you're in base contact or you just uh, a firefight, it doesn't matter. You still get that macro weapon. Um, Obviously, removing blast mark is still a pro. The cons. The cost, the invulnerable save, again, same as the other guys. I don't think there's a clear role to justify the cost with this guy. I think the macro weapon attacks are good, but I think that's it. 50 points for that. Um, I don't think that's decisive enough, personally, um, particularly if you're not assaulting, if you're just on the defense, um, then I don't actually think that... Um, that it's gonna be worth it necessarily um, for your 50 points. So I'm gonna put a tick and a cross for the librarian because I do think he is good and uh, I do think it's worth getting. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, he would not be an auto take in my list. All right, we move on to our tactical Marines. So you're looking here, we've got infantry now. We're going in, move 15 centimeters, four plus armor save, four plus close combat attack, four plus uh, firefight, uh, and they have the missile launcher, which is a 45 centimeter range, AP five plus, AT six plus. No real special rules on them, very vanilla, and they cost 275 points base, plus any upgrade you might put on them. This is your real basic unit. This is real kind of standard, I think, across Epic, when you look at the tactical Marines, four pluses across the board, and um, I think they are solid, all around solid stats. Um, tactically flexible, they can pretty much do anything. They can uh, kind of lead an attack or they can kind of defend. Um, yeah, I found a lot of use out of 
tactical marines and they've uh, they've surprised a few of my opponents over the years too um, because they are quite tough given the the uh, special rules that the whole army has um, there's lots of upgrades you can put on them you can kind of kit them out with different characters or dreadnoughts or, or things like that take a vindicator take a hunter a whole lot of upgrades the most that you'll get in the army um, for the tactical marines so lots of upgrades there the cons uh, they don't do anything special really <clears throat> so if you're the kind of player that wants all of your uh, units to, to fit a particular speciality because that's how you play then the tacticals might disappoint you in that but they get a big tick from me the assault marines so again it's infantry 30 centimeter move this time same armor save the four plus it's kind of a standard power armor save in a lot of ways uh, three plus in close combat but back to a five plus in the firefight and they do have jump packs so you've got a bit of uh, a bit of mobility with these guys just got the um, bolt pistols which is a small arms attack um, with these guys so not really reaching out at range to do anything but that's okay you, you wouldn't expect that um, 175 points for four bases or four units in the formation so I didn't mention in the tacticals that was six units and uh, so that was uh, what were they 275 so these guys 100 points less but you only get four units in there plus whatever upgrades you uh, want to put on them the pros of these guys is they are fast 30 centimeters is pretty quick for infantry um, and that three plus in close combat is really good so I think there, there's something to be said about them the cons are it's a small unit four guys uh, is it really you're not taking extra rhinos and other things like that to potentially uh, pat it out a bit it's just four guys four units maybe with a character upgrade you don't want to take any hits with these guys um, I've found they can't take on big enemy units too you don't really want to charge these guys into uh, face up a, a big orc mob because you just won't win there's just too many enemies you might do some good damage but the most you're going to do is probably four casualties to your opponent uh, if they've got a whole lot of attacks back at you then it doesn't matter you've got four guys you're 50 50 on your save so i think there are yeah that, that's the con of them and they are very limited in their upgrades compared to the tacticals still get a big tick from me but i think you really want to use them for that role of assault um, maybe for objective grabbing but even then i think there's things in the army that do that better than these guys devastators so uh, very similar to the tacticals um, the difference is their close combat's a bit worse on a 5+, plus, but they get a 3 plus firefight, which is very good. No special rules, um, but they've got two missile launchers instead of the one that the tactical has. So you're looking at a bit of an upgrade over your uh, standard tactical marines. Uh, double the shots at range and a firefight, which is a bit more handy um, for the, than the tactical's 4+. plus. So they are pretty good, but you're looking 250 points again for four units. So 275 for your tacticals. For six, this is 250 for four, but you are looking at, um, yeah, a good amount of firepower coming out from every unit. Uh, the pros are more firepower for less. Yep, lots of upgrades still, um, very similar to the tacticals. And um, that is a great firefight value, I think. So very good if these guys can support in an assault, just add in their firefight value, can be very handy. The cons. Uh, weak in close combat, like 5 plus is pretty average. And um, they just don't have a lot of bodies in the unit, just like the Assault Marine. So that is the weakness of these guys. Big tick still, I think they are great. And I usually run at least one in uh, in most of my lists. And I find they're, they're pretty good for, um, yeah, garrisoning at the start of a, of a game. Set them up on Overwatch can be quite good. Okay, Scouts. Now, some of these uh, pictures are a bit low res. This is just stuff I grabbed off uh, off the internet. So, you know, full respect to the people that painted these and uh, drew these images. I'm just borrowing them for this. No credit for me. I'll uh, try and get some pictures of my stuff out, but um, I don't know if it'll look any better than that. Okay, scouts, we're looking at um, the same kind of thing. Infantry, 15 centimeter speed, five plus armor. So a little bit worse than your, uh, your normal Marines. Four plus close combat, five plus firefight. Um, so not really not really grabbing me with those stats. Um, the heavy bolter, 30 centimeters AP5, that's okay. It's okay, like not as good as the uh, missile launcher, but still it's all right as an AP attack. 
Um, infiltrators and scout is a special rule and they can add sniper for 10 points per unit into it. So sniper is where you can actually target who is taking the hit when you're shooting. So that's a, a pretty good rule. 150 points plus upgrades and you're looking at four units in the squad plus transports. So it's, uh, it's not a bad cost in that. So the pros, uh, you get a lot of scout shenanigans with them. So the scouts let them just fan out a bit more, um, let them just have a, a bigger zone of control. Uh, it's really handy. As you start playing Epic more, you realize scouts have a real, um, yeah, a real nice space in the game with that. Um, they have Infiltrator, which is good. Um, I've said it's a double-edged sword. It basically, it is good. It helps you with assaulting. Um, but it might make you think that you're better at assaulting than you are. Four of these guys assaulting something, it's probably a bad idea. Um, the transports are good to bulk up the units, I find. You know, four guys, four rhinos. Those rhinos can soak up some macro weapon hits if they need to. And uh, the snipers are a big plus two if you want to pay that. The uh, cons for them is they are weaker than other marine units. They're, they're very squishy and I think quite unforgiving if you don't use them right. Um, but the good thing is usually they're not a target. So the scouts get a tick from me as well. A pretty cheap little squad to have in with the scout rule. The rhinos that they can take make them quite mobile as well. Okay, terminators, your big boys. So again, you're looking at a 15 centimeter move for them. Four plus armor save, three plus close combat, three plus firefight. Uh, you're looking at two assault cannons putting out AP5s and AT5s at 30 centimeters, so some heavy firepower there. Plus, um, each unit will have a power weapon, so base contact assault weapon there, um, doing an extra attack macro weapon in uh, in close combat. So that's uh, quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of firepower and uh, melee there in the unit. Reinforced armor gives them a reroll on their armor save. Uh, teleport lets them teleport into battle instead of having to slog it out or take a transport. And thick rear armor lets them just avoid that uh, crossfire minus one um, on their armor save. So some really good solid rules there. Uh, the cost is where it hits you. 350 points starting for this unit. So that is very expensive. But great stats on these guys. Four plus rerollable armor. Brilliant. Um, yeah, close combat firefight. Yep, yeah, excellent. Great weapons. Like the assault cannons are surprisingly good. Um, they are very flexible. Um, they can do pretty much anything. And they're tough as nails. Um, it may not seem it, four plus re rollable, but um, they can take a lot of fire for, for what they are. Um, the cons, as you are probably going to guess, is the cost. Um, 350 base is big for four units um, so that's a big will you get the return on the investment maybe um, you might get a bit scared of having them cost so much um, that you may not use them as aggress aggressively as you need to because you do need to use these guys aggressively if you want to get that that money back basically you're looking at four turns in a standard game of epic so uh, you need to be getting some points back for these guys and they are slow as well um, without, if they don't teleport in or they don't take a land raider transport, they're pretty slow. So, but um, 350 points, expensive before you do anything to help them out, right? Big tick from me, I love Terminators. And um, yeah, particularly as you start getting in some higher points games, a unit or two of these are brilliant. Bikes, okay, so these are infantry still. 35 centimeters, so really fast. Four plus armor, brilliant. 3 plus close combat, really good firefight, not bad on a 4 plus. So some good solid stats there. Just come with the twin bolters, which are small arms, so just able to put out that firefight value, nothing else at range. Um, got the mounted special rule, um, which is fine. 200 points for um, 5 units, which is pretty good. I'm pretty sure it's 5 units. And uh, you can mix them with the attack bikes, which we'll look at next. Um, the pros of these guys, great speed with solid stats. I think they are actually really good. I like I, I do like bikes. They add a different tactical role to the other units that we've seen so far. They are still tough, like these the other ones, but they're fast. Uh, they can go into melee, and I think that three plus close combat, um, I think makes a makes a, a, a case in a lot of times to to replace um, your assault marines with these guys. Um, but you know, people might disagree with that. 
Um, if they were scouts, yes, definitely, but they're not, unfortunately. But they do give you a different, a different tactical role. They can be objective grabbers late game. Um, you know, if you're marching with these guys moving about a metre, that is pretty impressive in a turn. Cons, not many upgrades for them. And um, it's easy when something's this fast compared to the rest of the army to get separated. Um, there's not much that's going to be flogging up the side of the board with them. So they can get isolated pretty easily and they're not too hard to deal with if that's the case. Uh, and like I already said, they're not scouts, but you know, got to have some negatives. 200 points is probably a really fair price for them, I think. Now you can, so they get a big tick from me first up. You can mix them with the attack bikes. So the attack bikes are a light vehicle this time. So not, not infantry like the bikes, but a light vehicle. Makes them a little bit more susceptible to, to incoming damage. Um, same speed, same armor. Um, close combat, not as good. Firefight is the same. Uh, so it's, it's okay. It's a, it's a little downgrade there on the close combat and the light, light vehicle. Um, heavy bolter. Um, yeah, heavy bolter is, is okay. 30 centimeters AP5, nothing, nothing great. Um, you can mix these guys in with a unit uh, just like you can with the bikes and these guys don't have mounted like the other ones. Um, so the pros, you still got that speed. Um, the firepower, it is like it's fast. It's a, it's a good little platform to, with a, a good bit of reach, you can double move and then shoot. You're looking at close to a meter. Um, well, you are looking at a meter if you do that. So that is fast. Um, yeah, that is good reach, good threat range. The cons, that light vehicle is a killer. If you, if you took five of them in a unit, um, yeah, they're going to get shot up uh, quite easily. Um, mediocre close combat and, uh, and firefight for Marines, like those values aren't impressive. Um, so I'd say you do not want to get these guys in assault. So you don't really want to mix them in with the other bikes, I don't think. I think you want a unit of bikes or a unit of attack bikes. Um, I think the firepower is a bit crap, actually. It's not very impactful. They're, they're, even if you have five of them, shooting out five of those AP5s, that's not great for 200 points, I don't think, for what else they do for being light vehicles. I just don't think they're, they're really, that's not really a role that um, the Space Marines were, were desperate for. Um, yeah, I think you're better off taking uh, a unit of scouts um, with rhinos, cheaper, not as much firepower, but almost as much, and got the scout rule. So I think these guys just don't quite fit anywhere. And so I'm going to give them the X. I don't take attack bikes. I just, if I do, it's a bit of a fluff, a bit of a fluff unit. I just don't think they're great. So I wouldn't, couldn't recommend them. All right, we're on to Land Raider now. It's the big boys. These are armored vehicles, 25 centimeters. So not super quick, but not the slowest um, for their speed. Four plus armor, six plus close combat, four plus firefight. Okay, so you're looking at, um, you know, firefight is okay. Close combat, no. Um, don't do it. All right. Um, as far as weapons and firepower are, two twin LAS cannons, so that's uh, AT4s, two of them, coming out to 45 centimeters, and the twin heavy bolter is an AP4 at 30 centimeters. So a bit of a bit of firepower coming out from each one, which is good. Reinforced armor gives you a reroll on that. Thick rear armor again lets you avoid that um, that crossfire bonus against you, and they are a transport. And uh, this is a big one for them. They can transport Terminator units. Um, so each one can transport one or they can transport two uh, other units without jump packs. So like your tacticals or your devastators. Uh, the cost is the interesting part. 325 points plus upgrades if you buy a unit of four straight up. So you can just buy four Land Raiders for 325, but you're, you're disincentivized to just do that. And I generally wouldn't. Um, if you're looking at them as an upgrade, they're 75 points each. Uh, which works out at 300 points if you want four, or it actually works out less because they, they give you a deal. It's a bit of a sale that they seem to have on Land Raiders. You get two of them for 125. So if you want to buy four, that's 250 points as opposed to 325, saving 75 points. So I think they are better than, in that case, as a transport than as an individual unit. But you can still get some mileage out of them. The pros, they are tough as. Just looking... You're looking at the same thing you are as the uh, Terminators, which is why they match up well with them. Um, if you take Terminators in Land Raiders, everyone's got that four plus re-rollable. Um, there is some solid firepower coming out of them. Two AT4s can't be underestimated at 45 centimeters. 
If you've got four of them, that's eight shots coming out. Pretty good. Plus your AP4s, pretty good. Um, this is the best transport that you've got for the Marines, um, you know, outside of a, a Thunderhawk, perhaps dropping stuff in. But yeah, the best regular transport you'll probably use. So, But you do pay for it. So the cons, it's expensive. It's very expensive. I think four for 250 points as, a, as transports is pretty good. So it's, it is expensive, but I think it's pretty good if you take them as an upgrade like that. Um, there's only four units in the, in the formation. Um, I mean, again, you, you can't expect too much um, in that. I think for 325, it does seem to sting, but I, I get it. Um, and I think one of the cons is that uh, if you add these on as a transport, say you do it to Terminators, you are looking at potentially your most expensive unit um, in, yeah, basically in your list, which um, is an objective for your opponents again, if you're playing off the, uh, the, the, the general tournament rules, which you probably are, um, unless you're running a, a Titan of some sort. So if you're gonna chuck these on as a transport, the unit that they're transporting is now a big target and you wanna get your points back, so you wanna push them up, you wanna use them, but if you lose them, you give away an objective. So it can be a bit tricky in that sense, but they are tough. Um, the firepower, I think, is really good, but um, you really wanna shoot things that let you use all your AT and AP. Um, I, you know, if you just start shooting at vehicles with this, all your AP shots go to waste, or if you just start shooting at infantry, your AT, that would be a terrible thing. To do so it can be a bit tricky um, if you're shooting in a mixed unit it's great if they they pair up pretty well with terminators because terminators have that ap5 at5 so terminators don't care who they shoot so it's a nice little match with terminators i think um, but yeah ideally you want them to shoot at something with a mixed unit so all their hits can do some damage uh, so i'm giving it a tick and a cross um, i think as a transport it's just a tick I think if you're taking it as a unit by itself, um, yeah, if you want to, I don't usually, but um, a case could be made and I could be convinced. All right, Predator Annihilator. We're looking at an armored vehicle here with a speed of 30, so pretty decent. Four plus armor save, six plus close combat again, like the Land Raider, so pretty abysmal. Five plus firefight, not great. Um, but the weapons, this is where it's at for this uh, this unit. Uh, a twin LAS cannon, so you're looking at um, AT4 at 45 centimeters, and then it's got two LAS cannons, so two AT5 attacks at 45 centimeters. So three AT shots coming out of each unit, which is pretty good. No special rules, 250 points, gives you four of them plus your upgrades, and you can mix and match with the Predator's, Predator's Destructor, which we'll look at um, in just a second. The pros, so um, great AT firepower platform, I think. Uh, four of these, chucking out 12 shots, 80 shots a turn is pretty good. Good speed for them as well. There's a good threat range. That 45 centimeters means that you can just move and shoot um, a lot of the time pretty pretty reasonably. You don't have to double move and shoot and reduce your effectiveness. Um, I also find they're a good unit for my hunters. Uh, one of these plus a 75 point hunter, 325, but you've got five units with pretty good threat range against AT and obviously the AA. Um, so I think that's a good little thing, but we'll get onto the Hunter later. The cons. These guys are not designed for assault. Don't get them in, <laughs> just don't. Um, six plus and five plus, they're just, they're not even good at supporting, I don't think. So just keep them back, keep them just focused on that anti-armor role. Um, they have a good armor save, but feel fragile. There's no reroll on it. So, you know, it's uh, it hurts when you lose one because they are costly for four units with a 50-50 roll. Um, so yeah, I just say you feel it when you lose them, particularly if you do chuck a hunter in there, and so you're paying that five for 325, it can, can be rough. But overall, they get a big tick from me. I love this unit. Predator Destructor, very similar. Um, you're looking, the difference is here. The firefight is a three plus, so wow, that's pretty good. Going from that five plus to a three plus, pretty good. You have your auto cannon doing one shot at 45 centimeters, an AP586. Um, eh, two heavy boulders at 30 centimeters doing AP5s. So you could at 30 centimeters be doing three AP5 shots, and I think that's what you have to do with them. That AT6 is just a bit of a trap. Don't even, 
do that. Um, no special rules, 250 points plus upgrades again, and you can mix and match. The pros, um, yep, you've got that good speed again, I think, for the Marines here, 30 centimeters. There's a decent anti-personnel uh, threat range, um, you know, three AP, five shots. Um, yeah, it's it's okay, we'll get onto that in a sec. The uh, firefight is great. That is really good, three plus, very nice. The cons, uh, I think they lack a good role in the army, uh, I think. They do have this AP firepower, but AP five is is not phenomenal. Um, you know, I think I think it's okay, but 250 points for it? I, yeah, I don't know. Um, the armor save, yeah, four plus is good, but it feels fragile because you've got four units for this cost. So um, I don't know. I actually, yeah, I don't like this unit. Um, I wouldn't take this unit personally. I just think that 250 points for the unit, I'm putting too much into AP5s. If I, if I yeah, double move shoot with these guys, AP6s, it's just garbage at that point. So they, they could be good. They could be good um, if you felt you just didn't, if you didn't have enough AP. But I think generally you will have enough AP because your tacticals and your devastators have better AP than AT shots. They're already doing AP5s. Um, so I think they are better and uh, more tactically flexible than these guys. So, yep, I think these guys get the big X from me. Sorry if you're a big fan of them. All right, moving on to land speeders. These are light vehicles. So, oh, getting, getting a bit rough there. 35 centimeters, that is brilliant. Four plus armor save, good again. Six plus close combat, terrible. Um, five plus firefight is, you know, it's a thing, it's not great. Weapons, they've got a multi-melter, which is interesting. It's a 15 centimeter range macro weapon, five plus. Um, I'll talk more about that in a sec, but it's interesting. It's uh, also a small arms attack it can do. Uh, it's a macro weapon, so that is that is interesting. Um, scout and skimmer, so scout, brilliant, I love it. Uh, one of the best parts of this unit, I think. Skimmer as well is, is very handy, pop-up attacks and uh, in close combat, you can always use a firefight value. Good stuff, good rules like that. 200 points and you're getting five of them, plus any upgrades you want, and you can mix them in with uh, land speeder tornadoes, and you can also upgrade them to typhoons, but we'll get onto those ones. The pros, great speed, great save, scout, skimmer, these are all good things. And these guys can be great at just last turn or third or fourth turn, grabbing an objective. I think they excel at that in the army. Yeah, you, if they're sitting sitting safe somewhere, they just can't be stopped at that. The cons. That range on that multi-melter is atrocious, below average. I know they can move and shoot, um, but still you're looking at a threat range there of 50 centimeters for a five plus shot. Five five plus shots. I know it's a macro weapon, but macro weapon five plus is just notoriously unreliable. You're looking at one hit out of the unit. Small arms is uh, the same kind of thing. Um, that five plus firefight, again, is just not reliable. If you're in, you can always use your firefight value, but if you're doing one hit against your unit on average, your enemy, um, it's, it's just, it's not good, guys. One or two hits, it's just not worth it. Not for 200 points. Um, you can't take advantage of the pop-up attacks either with that multi-melter because 15 centimeters is too short. It's too close. You don't want to be that close with such a fragile unit. I know they've got the four plus armor save, but it's a light vehicle, so they will get shredded. And I'll say it again as a con, it's a light vehicle. They will get shredded if they get shot. So I'm afraid this is a big X for me. Um, I don't like them. Their speed is good and they could grab the objectives. But no, nah, they are out from me, I'm afraid. I've tried to use them too many times. I've tried to make that multi-melter work, but you never, you're never going to get your money back on a 5-plus macro, I don't think. Um, not for this cost anyway. Now, land speed of Tornado. This is a little different. Same stats there going across, same special rules, but the weapons are different. So you've got the Assault Cannon, AP5, AT5. So same kind of thing that the um, Terminators were bringing, but just the one and a heavy bolter. So you're looking 30 centimeter AP5. So you've got two AP5 shots there, which is interesting. So remember we were looking at that out of the Predators um, here, but 200 points for five, um, 35 centimeters, scout skimmer, pop-up attacks. You can mix them with other land speeders, but 
you honestly wouldn't. Um, like there is, this is interesting. I think there's a decent AP firepower here, a decent threat range for it. Um, you're looking at 65 centimeter threat range just for a single move um, for 200 points. I think that's that's interesting. That's definitely interesting. That speed is phenomenal again. Um, like I said, you can actually use your pop-up attack with these guys. Late game, objective grabbers, scout skimmer, all good there. So some real good stuff with these guys. The cons, the, I think the big one that I have is light vehicles. Um, yeah, it can just hurt. You could argue the fact they're not good in assault, but um, I don't think that's their job. They shouldn't be in an assault. If they're in assault, you've done, well, you've been assaulted. Like, um, yeah, you shouldn't be charging these guys in. So they get the tick from me. If I'm going to run uh, for the same cost, I'm going to take tornadoes over your regular land speeders every time, hands down. But again, this kind of thing probably means those uh, AP predators don't get a look in either. All right, the typhoons. So we're looking here, same stats again, same special rules, but now we've got a twin typhoon missile launcher, AP3 AT5. So you're upping your AP game here a little. And you've got the heavy bolter there at 30 centimeters. Spelling mistake, my bad. AP5. So you're looking at um, upgrading your AP a little bit here over your uh, tornadoes. It is a 10 point per model upgrade. So you have to buy your uh, normal 200 point um, skimmers, uh, land speeders, and then pay another 50 points total if you want the whole squad to go up to Typhoon. So you're looking 250. It's interesting, that's a decent AP firepower and the threat range is even better, I guess, because you've got 45 centimeters, although you really want your heavy bolter in too. Um, yeah, there's a great speed. Um, the weapon loadout means that um, you're gonna uh, be using that pop-up tack even a bit more. Um, and again, late, J late game objective grabber, scout, skimmers, all good stuff. The cons still light vehicles. So, I yeah, I'm the jury's out for me. I'm going to need to see the cost-benefit analysis uh, for the extra 10 points. I haven't used these guys as much as I probably should have. Um, so maybe I need to run these a bit more just to test them. I have had them used against me, but not to great effect. But um, that might have just been, um, you know, my opponent not necessarily doing as good as they could have. Um, so I'm going to give them the tick. Going to give them the tick because I think they are good. But again... Um, it's only if you can fit that extra 50 points in, probably. Okay, Vindicators. Here we are, we've got an armored vehicle, 25 centimeter speed, so again, a little bit slower than your Predators. Four plus armor, close combat, not great. Six plus, five fight, decent on a four plus. Got the Demolisher Cannon, um, that's interesting. 30 centimeter range, AP3, AT4, and um, that is a, a ignore cover weapon as well. So a walker means that they're uh, able to enter into terrain that other vehicles can't. So check out my special rules for more on walker. 225 points plus upgrades will get you four of them or you can buy them as upgrades for units. A lot of units can take Vindicators. 50 points for one or you get a saving, a special if you buy two for 75. So um, I think the two for 75 is the way to, to look at running these guys personally. The pros for them, it is a solid gun. Um, 30 centimeters, not the greatest range, but still AP3, AT4, ignore cover. That is very interesting. The ability to hit units in cover, particularly infantry for AP3 is, is really good. Um, being able to enter terrain is, is potentially good. So I've got that as a pro. And um, it's a nice little upgrade for 75 points. Uh, it's cons, it's not much firepower. If you buy four of them, it's four shots. Sure, they could be AP3s ignoring cover, but 225 points for four shots? Um, yeah, maybe, maybe, four shots. Could armor save, but they do feel fragile if you buy that, that unit for 225 points a gain. Um, so yeah, a con there is just, I think that standalone unit feels pricey when you can get them for, for a pair for 75. So I'd, yeah, I'm gonna, the jury's out for me. I'm gonna say maybe, kind of like the Land Raider in a sense. I, I just don't see myself really ever buying this as a standalone unit, like less so than the Land Raiders. I'd buy the Land Raiders for sure uh, before I'd buy this. But um, as an upgrade, yeah, I think you can make a case for it. I don't 
often do it, but you definitely can. All right, getting through the units now, whirlwinds. Armor vehicle, good speed of 30. Five plus armor is, is fairly fragile. Standard close combat six plus, five fight five plus that we're seeing on a lot of these space marine vehicles. Your whirlwind is your weapon. Uh, so your little missile launcher there, uh, 45 centimeter range. So not great for artillery, but it is a one barrage point indirect fire weapon. So you double the range if you do a um, sustained fire attack, um, which is what you're gonna do. Uh, you're not usually gonna fire these directly. Um, so yeah, you're getting a 90 centimeter range, which yeah, is okay. Four of them for 275, so it's putting them in the pricier end. Um, and you can add upgrades on, but um, you're probably not going to. Maybe a hunter, just as a little anti-air. Um, all right, the pros. Indirect fire is good. Um, it is good. Uh, and a decent speed as well if you do need to move them. 30 centimeters is, is decent. This unit does what other units don't do for Space Marines. Uh, they add that firepower, they add that barrage in. So I think they can definitely, there can definitely be a case for them to be made for that reason, that no one else is reaching out really without you know, potentially taking shots back. So I think the Whirlwinds, um, by doing something other people don't do, they do justify that 275 points. Um, and they're great. At, if you can get them on your baseline objective, holding that and then uh, doing their indirect fire, they don't have to move. They can just stay there and just kind of guard that objective while they just keep raining down fire. So that's um, what they're usually good for. Cons, five plus armor. They have fragile. Do, do not get them shot. Try and get your objective in a way where they can stay within 15 and, uh, and just hide behind a building because they do not want to be shot. That cost is, is high for four units for 275. We are... We're looking like pretty pricey. Not too many units, um, except Land Raiders, getting up to that price. In very mediocre stats outside of that indirect fire, they really do nothing. So, um, yeah, very, very limited use, but a very specialist use. So I'm giving them the tick. Uh, I do think they're good, and I do think they are worth that um, if that's what you're looking in your army. Dreadnoughts. So, Dreadnoughts. The boys, armor vehicles, 15 centimeter uh, move. So the same as infantry, three plus armor. You did read that right, three plus armor. I had to read that again the first time I played because I thought nothing's got three plus in this army. Um, so yep, best best armor save there, kind of. Um, close combat four, five fight four plus. Look at all those weapons that they can take. Uh, and I'll, I'll just, I'll come back to that in a sec. So they are walkers. Um, and they are armed with either the missile launcher and twin las cannon. So you're looking at, um, uh, I suppose, a mixed kind of bag there. AT4 is good. AP5, AT6 is, is kind of standard Space Marine unit shooting, really. Um, or you've got the uh, assault cannon, AP5, AT5, and the power fist. Um, so, yeah, I, th I kind of like, I like that las cannon. But, you know, uh, if I think I'm going to get assaulted in the unit that they're going on, then I'm going to take that power fist. Um, these are a 50 point per model upgrade only. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so you can't take these as a unit by themselves. They go with another unit. Um, I generally, if I take these guys, I run them with a Devastator squad and uh, basically set them up as a garrison. And if I think they're going to get assaulted, like my opponent is uh, running a, an army that likes to assault, I'll chuck that power fist on. If not, if you think you're just going to be shooting, get that Laz Cannon missile launcher set up. The choice of weapons is a pro, I've said. Um, I think it's always nice to have that flexibility. That Armor Saver 3 Plus is gold. That is definitely a pro. Um, you don't get the reroll, so it's not as good as a Terminator or as a Land Raider. Um, but still, a 3 Plus, we're looking at, you know, some pretty good saves there. All round solid. Um, upgrade I think to just beef up another unit like I said my devastators have benefited from these guys um, particularly if somebody gets into assault it's nice to be able to punch out a couple of macro weapon attacks back at them um, real good uh, the cons are they are slow compared to mobile units so I think that it, it kind of gets hard to justify them in a unit that isn't maybe garrisoning for me um, because you know chuck them on a tactical squad the tactical squad wants to 
fly away in their rhinos and leave these guys behind. So that's the main negative I see. I don't mind paying 50 points for them for some reason. I think that three plus armor save definitely helps um, keep them alive. Big tick from me for Dreadnoughts. Hunters, this is interesting. Armor vehicle, 30 centimeter speed, all good. Armor five plus, so, you know, fragile, but that's okay. Um, just absolute rubbish, close combat and firefight. So take a hint, it's not meant to be there. The weapon, the Hunter Killer is a 60 centimeter uh, attack. It's an AT4, so that's pretty good. 60 centimeters at AT4, it's like a souped up twin las cannon. Uh, AA4+, plus. that's the first one we've seen in the army. The first AA attack, and um, you're not gonna see too many more uh, past here. Um, 75 point upgrade only, that's for one hunter, so expensive, but this is your anti-air for your space marines generally, unless you're running um, some, you know, Imperial Navy uh, interceptors. So if you just wanna run straight space marines, this is them. The pros are that this is a great AA option, I find. Um, it's an effective weapon, an AA4 plus at 60 centimeters. It is funny, it's only a 50-50 to hit, but it's funny how much fear it seems to put in your opponents. They're like, oh, that 60 centimeter range, it really gets them thinking, uh, do, I, do I go in, do I not? Like it's an effective weapon, I think. The fact you can use it AT, uh, or you've got the AA option, so it's never wasted. Um, I think this is a great little uh, upgrade to a unit. You don't want many of them, and I think you want it in the right unit. Um, I, yeah, I already mentioned I put it with my Predators, my um, Destructors, the Lascana ones, the anti-tank ones, because the AT matches that unit. So if it just needs to get used to, to target ground vehicles, then it goes perfectly with that unit. Uh, but it's still got the AA there, and they want to hang back and not get into Assault, just like this guy. So it matches up nicely with that unit. I don't put this under Tactical Squads. I'd rarely put it on a Devastator squad. It's usually something like a Predator, maybe Whirlwinds, but again, it doesn't mesh up with the attack of the Whirlwinds. So um, I think you're really looking something like a Predator unit. But again, tell me in the comments how you use it. Uh, I could learn probably how to be better with my Hunters. Uh, but one to two of them in a lot of games will definitely put out a threat bubble that will, will scare the opponent's bombers a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, the cons are 75 points a, a pop is, is expensive and it does have pretty uh, mediocre stats at five plus armor is uh, is definitely worrisome if someone gets a drop on it so but you know use it in a way that it's not the obvious target big tick for hunters i do like them all right rhinos this is your standard transport 30 centimeters five plus armor save close combat firefight both six plus so pretty average just got the uh, Storm Boulder, which basically is a small arm, so just lets it give that support in Assault. All right, so you can transport, transport two infantry units in each Rhino, um, except for Terminators. So you can't take Termies in these, so Termies are gonna take the Land Raiders, uh, and you can't take anything that's jump packs or mounted, so don't try and put your bikes in a Rhino, I guess. Um, these are generally free, so you, you, you don't buy Rhinos. They come as an option for Tacticals, Devastators, Scouts, uh, I think that's all. Um, so, and you get enough to cover the unit. So Devastator Squad will get two Rhinos. So you could have two in each one, two Rhinos, Tactical, three, Scouts, two. So that's how you generally work it out. The pros are it's a decent transport. I mean, there's no reason not to take them. It can be a meat shield. Um, a little bit, like if someone's trying to shoot you with macro weapons attack and, attacks and you don't want to lose your infantry, is put your rhinos up front, let them get hit. So again, it's not gonna blow you away, but it, it's, it does what it's meant to do. Just get you guys around, um, getting them up into a building or into some ruins or something. Cons, it's, it's just mediocre. There's nothing special about it. Um, even when it's, you know, you assault and you, you got your, your little firefight attack coming in over the shoulder of your Marines, eh, it's okay. It's just mediocre, but big tick. Um, they kind of come baked into the car, so take them unless you're taking something else. Razorbacks, this is where it gets interesting too when it comes to transports. So you're looking the uh, the same kind of stats, except the firefight, it can do a little better, five plus. And the way this is, five plus on your twin Laz Cannon version, four plus on your twin heavy bolter. So if you take the heavy bolters, which is not a bad option, you're doing a four plus firefight. Instead of your six plus on a rhino, so that's, that's a 
pretty good upgrade and it kind of matches well with your tactical marines. So yeah, you either take a twin Les Cannon, AT4 at 45 centimeters, so pretty good, or you take a heavy bolter at um, 30, centimeter, 30 centimeter AP4. Usually I'll take the heavy bolter with these. Like the Les Cannon's a better gun, but I think if I'm taking them, I'm probably taking them in, on tactical marines. Maybe on scouts, but I, I can't usually justify the cost. Uh, and I think since they're an AP5, AT6 unit, or tactical marines, I think the heavy bolter lines up better for who you're going to be shooting uh, that squad at. So, I yeah, usually. But both good options, both good weapons. Um, again, same kind of um, transport. Um, yep, except I'm pretty sure they only transport one. I think that's a mistake that I've got on here. Um, so my apologies, uh, they do only transport one unit um, instead of two, <clears throat> but that's okay. And you arm them with either gun. So, but they are 25 points each. Um, so you are paying for these. Rhinos are free, 25 points will get you one of these. So the pros, this is a solid way just to upgun your transports and I would say the unit they're with, like it really does make a, um, a tactical squad all of a sudden feel quite punchy when you can chuck in potentially another six AP four shots. Paying 150 points for it, but still that's not bad for six AP fours. Um, yeah, I think they're a, a flexible kind of addition. Um, that armament lets you choose what you want to do and that's, that's a nice supplement for your squads, I think. So again, pretty mediocre stats, except maybe that firefight on the twin heavy bolter, but still, you know, it's not phenomenal. Um, and you have to justify the extra cost. 25 points each. It doesn't seem like much, but it does if for a tactical unit. If you want to take six of them, that's 150 points. Okay, all of a sudden your tactical squad is now, um, you know, capping out pretty high, close to 500. So, yeah, particularly if you throw in different characters and stuff. So, again, it's a tough one. That's, that's what, yeah. I give it a big tick because I do like them. I think they're brilliant. But um, that cost, if they were just a little bit cheaper, either 15 points, yeah, wouldn't even be thinking about it. All right, getting into some uh, interesting ones. We'll go a bit quicker through these. You don't have as many options if you're looking for these things. We've got the Thunderhawk gunship. Um, so again, I'm going to release a, a video on these, uh, how to use these things soon. But it's an aircraft war engine. It, the speed it comes in at is a bomber, so that affects how it turns um, when it's making an attack run or an air assault. Four plus armor save, uh, close combat of six and a firefighter four. Lots of weapons on it, battle cannon uh, and a lot of twin heavy bolters, but um, it's that weird one where the it's the twin heavy bolter with the lower range and you've got to pay attention there. The two twin heavy bolters going out the front, the other twin heavy bolters are the left and right respectively. A lot of AA on it, um, which I have seen work just for the record. So. It's interesting, it can put out some AA. Um, yeah, that AP attack is okay, um, but you're looking at 200 points for this unit. Um, you're not getting it to shoot, basically. It shoots after it kind of does what it has to do. Damage capacity two, so you can take two hits on these before they go down, um, which is okay. Uh, planet fall so if you want to be dropping these boys in to to drop off their troops instead of just using it like an aircraft um, you're going to need a, uh, a spacecraft to do that reinforced armor so at least that four plus is re-rollable and they can transport eight infantry attack bikes or dreadies uh, terminators and dreadies count as two units but so you can take a, a decent sized little squad or a couple of squads if you're doing assault marines in them um, so that's yeah, it's interesting the pros for these are air assaults are fun. So if you haven't chucked a couple of uh, assault marine squads with chaplains and stuff in them, uh, you definitely should. It's fun. It's cool. That's pretty much the pro for this unit for 200 points. The cons. Damage capacity 2, 200 points. Um, it might seem fair. It's not. It's not fair, guys. Like, when you have, uh, yeah, potentially 400 points or more inside. So if it gets hit twice and can't save, you lose a 200 plus, potentially another 400. Um, you're looking five to 600 points, easy, down the drain. 
you have to use this well if you want to get return on points, basically. Um, if you're not using it for planet four or for an assault roll, it's a waste of points, I think. Don't take it for its guns. Don't take it to fly in and shoot and all that. I just think that nah, it's, it's just not worth it personally. Those ranges are really short and yeah, you're just gonna get gunned down. Um, so I personally wouldn't use it unless I'm doing a particularly air assault focused roll, which is fun. Um, but again, damage capacity two means that if you're playing an opponent who has decent AA, um, if they've got some air, air units on cap or they've got a couple of good um, AA units, couple of hunters or a few, you know, what any army can just put out some AA um, then you're going to be second guessing whether or not you should send in your Thunderhawk. So Planet 4 might be a better option. But again, yeah, uh, you've really got to theme your list around that to get some mileage out of this, I think. So I'll give it the tick, but only in those rolls. Drop Pods. So again, this is an option you have. Um, you can take Drop Pods instead of Rhinos for anyone that's got that plus transport, remember? The good thing is when the Drop Pod comes in, it does have a little... Um, little death wing attack 15 centimeter ap5 at5 and it attacks uh, i think every formation or something in uh, in range i'd have to have a look at that again but you do need um a spacecraft for this because it is planet fall um you can transport uh one unit in each tacticals devies or dreadnoughts uh, inside them so it is pretty cool uh it's a free upgrade for units um just like the rhinos with the plus transports uh, I think the pros for this are your targeted deployment with fire support is, is kind of cool. It's fr free as well. Um, yeah, but I think you have to theme your army around this because you're going to have to pay at least 150 points for a spacecraft. Um, so they're not free in essence. They're not like a Rhino. A Rhino is free. This is 150 point tax if you want to use drop pods. And I think you need to then use it on multiple units to make it worthwhile to spread that cost out across a few formations. Um, and it's also not wise necessarily just to drop someone in by themselves they're pretty well cut off from the rest of your force so you might want to drop a few uh, formations in together so that would be the way i would do it um, the cons is you do need that spacecraft you got to pay the tax 150 points at least get a tick but again just like thunderhawk got to be in the right spot landing craft <clears throat> all right this is um again something i'm not very experienced with i yeah haven't really used these much um so it's an aircraft again four plus armor five plus three plus so fire fight is, is decent i'll give it that and uh, there's two twin lace cannons pretty punchy the heavy bolters they're the short range uh ones again so it's it's okay it's not bad but again it's filling a roll damage capacity four um so hey more, it's better than your uh, your thunderhawk but it is almost twice the cost Fearless, cool, Planetfall. So if you want to do it in a Planetfall role, you're going to need that spacecraft there. Reinforced armor, obviously, and transport up to 12 infantry. Attack bikes or dreddies. Terminators and dreddies count as two, so same kind of things. You can also do six armored vehicles, um, which is pretty cool. And uh, land raiders count as one and a half units rounding up. So some fiddly math there that you have to do if you're taking these. Um, 350 points. That's expensive. So, the pros for it, you drop an assault force where it needs to go, lots of firepower to go with it, pretty clearly. Cons, it costs a lot of, a lot of points. Uh, this is not for a, your all comers list. This is uh, basically for a very specific style of list where you're going, maybe if you're taking this, you might take some drop pods too. You could drop this in, you could drop some Thunderhawks in, you could drop some Drop Pods in, but you're putting a lot of points into the method for delivering your troops. Um, and the tricky bit is, in Epic, sometimes, you know, mobility's not worth that much. So, again, it's I think it's great for a themed army, and if you've got a particular style that you're going for, yeah, this, this could definitely work. So, jury's out on it. I would say yes, if if it's the backbone of your army, it dropping stuff in. Um, it can do a bit once it's dropped the stuff off, but you know, it's not phenomenal either for 350 points. All right, spacecraft. Um, yeah, you're looking basically to give you the, 
the basic ones on this, your orbital bombardment is five barrage points, macro weapon, and you're doing 20 infantry units at Hackbox or Dreddies, 20 light vehicles or armor vehicles, six Thunderhawk gunships, and enough drop pods and landing craft to transport everything else. 200 points. Well, there you go. I was wrong. I thought it was 150. It's actually 200. It's 150 points to upgrade this to a battle barge. That's what I was thinking of. So it's a 200 point tax if you want to do planet fall in a space marine army. The pros are it's a spacecraft and the cons are it's a spacecraft. If you want a spacecraft, feel free to take it. Uh, five barrage points, macro weapon is not very special. Um, in smaller games, you, yeah, I just don't see the point in uh, in this unless you've really got a, a style and a style list and a, a theme or a particular strategy. So take it if you want it. It's a battle barge, uh, so it's 350 points. So uh, yeah, it's pricey. 14 barrage points at least, macro weapon. You're at least getting some good attacks out of that and you can transport everything that you would ever need to transport in a marine army because that is a lot of units for a marine army. Nine Thunderhawk gunships, you are playing a big game, my friend. So the pros are it's a huge spacecraft and the cons are it's an expensive spacecraft. Although that said, 350 points, that's the cost of a lander. So, you know, this it's pretty good. All right, let's keep moving on from that. So what's the verdict? That's the army. I think I've captured everything there. If I've missed out anything or I've made some mistakes, I will pin them in the comments. But let's give the verdict or my verdict. This is all my opinion. Disagree with me in the comments if you like. Uh, what are the strengths of this? Um, I think the strength of the Space Marine, one of the strengths of the Space Marine Army is you get a lot of small units, which lets you get a lot of variety. Um, you can take a heap of different units and a heap of different types of units that you want to, and it's kind of fun to do that. Um, whereas some other armies, say like Imperial Guard, um, sometimes you feel like you're taking big formations and um and you're not getting a huge variety you've got a lot of upgrades but you know this is a unit of armored cav and so is this and that's a lot of points where space marines you can go tactical devastator assault uh, whirlwinds a whole lot of different things in your army and there's a lot of specialist units in there it is the swiss army knife kind of role outside of the tacticals um you get your bikes to do their role and you get your predators to do their role so um, I think it's nice because you can really go, this unit, I've taken them for this particular role. Um, so it's it's good. Um, they're cheapish formation, so you can have something of everything. Like I said, like they feel expensive. And when you start losing them, you, you do kind of wince in pain a little bit compared to, you know, when you're losing your, your Gretchens and your, your Orcs and stuff from another army. But um, they are still fairly cheap. Um, you know, 275 points for tacticals. It's not bad given that um, they're hard to suppress, they're hard to break, they stick around longer than they should. You can buy a whole lot of different little units. It's only if you start investing in big units of Terminators with Land Raiders or start going crazy with that that, um, that it gets out of hand. So cheapish formations in some ways, but um, yeah. Tactically flexible, highly specialist. I've already mentioned that. Um, you got a lot of flexibility in what you want to build to in this list you can specialize everything out um, you can take an all comers list just which is generally how i play just something that will um, you know take on anything that turns up or you can theme it you can go full strike list you can have drop pods coming in and thunderhawks and whatever terminators pushing up in land raiders a real rhino rush kind of feel to it or a real defensive list with a lot of dreadnoughts and stuff holding the line it's up to you uh, so i think it's really good for how you can build these guys. Um, reliable activation, one plus, just can't be overstated. Reliable strategy, five strategies, just again, can't be overstated how those two just work so well just to give you control. You have, you feel like you're in control of the battle for a lot of that. And you know, you're usually up against it for numbers and stuff, but you know that you're gonna have the, the, the first strike if you need to, and your men are probably gonna do what they're told to, so it's great for that. Uh, they are tough, like I've said. They can just take a whole lot of fire and not break. They're not running away easily, and when they do, they come back, they're, they're ready to go again. Uh, it could be real cool. And um, I think there is, one of the strengths, they're iconic, aren't they? 
Space Marines, Codex Astartes, however you want to call them, they're iconic. There's a cool fact to them. I know we can, you know, 40K's kind of ruined them a bit, kind of overplayed them, overdone them, but there is still, I find, an epic. You're getting back to the roots of Space Marines. There's something cool about them. And this is also my only fully painted epic army because it's easy. There's just a lot less, you know, I've got... Um, I've got four main armies, which are all the main armies in the uh, core Epic Armageddon book. And uh, these are the only guys that are fully painted. The rest, there's just so many models. And it's epic. You know, there's, they're not that hard to paint. But um, these guys, really easy to paint. So that's a strength. Areas of difficulty that you might run into with them. Generally, you're outnumbered. You're not the horde. Um, unless you are playing something really elite, you are outnumbered. You might have more activations... Um, you might have more formations as a you know kind of lining up with that but you know your formation might have four units whereas they might have less but they could like you know when you see some of the orc mobs that get run sometimes and there's 30 units in a in a formation it's just you are outnumbered um so you're not always getting that plus one in assault uh so you're, you're outnumbered so you've got to act um yeah you've got to act appropriately Taking casualties, like I said, just makes, just hurts. It hurts. Um, I spelled casualties wrong there as well. My apologies. Uh, it hurts when you, you start taking off Terminators and Land Raiders, things like that. It, yeah, it really hurts. But you know that you guys can still fight on even when they take a hit. So um, good units, like there are good units in the army, but they're not always the best at what they do. And they're not the biggest for sure. And what do I mean by that? They are highly specialized in some ways. Um, but even then, I still find they can be outclassed by other u other armies. Um, you know, example, your whirlwinds. Okay, they're specialized in that indirect fire role, but <laughs> give me basilisks, you know, <laughs> give me them any day. Um, I just, yeah, so I find that other, other armies just have things that just do that better. You know, like I, I look at my Eldar army and... Yeah, sure. My predators in this are good at anti-tank stuff, but I can just get some uh, fire prisms, yeah, and you know, be doing hit and runs and things like that. So you can just find it's yeah, you just kind of get outclassed a little bit sometimes, but you are tough and you can take the hit and you're reliable. That's what you got going for you over those other ones. So your assault squads might be four guys and they can't really stand up to a whole eight, you know, eight strong formation of howling banshees. But, you know, you have the tactical flexibility to work around that. So, yeah, placement is essential with Space Marines. Uh, it's easy to get you guys out of formation and just get picked off or swamped or something like that. I find they work best when they are supporting each other. You've got these little units for a reason. They can support each other. If someone's getting assaulted, you want someone providing fire support for them. Or if you're assaulting someone, you generally want one or two three units going in at the same time or to have that firefight um, support just waiting for them so placement is really essential to to do well with them um, but they are pretty forgiving in some ways uh, and lastly an area of, it's not a, it's not a area of difficulty in a sense but um, if you want titans there's no space marine titans you, you're getting the imperial guard ones you're getting the imperial navy um, for a lot of your, your well for your interceptors and bombers and stuff like that so it depends if you're okay with um with you know calling on those allies for those things yeah it's no problem at all um you know but uh, but you know for theme um if you just want to run space marines only and no imperial stuff then you do miss out on that but i don't think that's a problem i think it's only if you're in bigger games that you probably want to chuck in a titan or something because they're cool and uh, i think you can justify that in the fluff all right well thank you very much for watching this has been a long one i know but again it was just in response to people asking for a bit of a review on uh, some of the armies uh, if you guys like this let me know and i will make more um, if not i assumed you stopped watching you know 50 minutes ago probably um, but thanks for watching uh, like subscribe do all those normal things that you got to do and i'll see you next time on too many games have a good day